championship game. Well, the Big Reds have been on a tremendous roll here the last three years, been to the big dance a couple times. Hopefully, this can be the third time is a charm. Hope to get back there for a third straight time. The road to the Division IV championship game starts tonight in Zanesville. The kickoff is next here on the News Channel 7 Game of the Week. Howdy, partner. Lee and James Costa, we're ready for kickoff here tonight of this Division IV first round playoff game. Bel Air Big Reds won the opening toss they've elected to receive. Piketon will put their foot to the ball, and Bel Air will get their first shot at it. The Big Reds on the return, number 20 is Ob Nolan. Nolan, a good return up over to the 30 yard line, and that's where Bel Air will start out offensively here as we get this ball game underway. So let's go ahead and set the Bel Air Big Reds offense. Of course, they are led by very talented quarterback, Mr. Ty Masarelli. But up front, it's guys like Schmidley, McFeely, LaRoche, Poe, and Chirpus who get those holes open. The tight end is Ryan Snyder. The flanker is Richie Matterkowski. Of course, Masarelli, as we mentioned. DeLong at the split end. The fullback tonight, we'll see Jimmy Preston there, along with Quinn Campbell, who's in there right now. And Clint Lacondas is the tailback as well. They'll come out with Quinn Campbell, number three at fullback, and also Lacondas split at tailback behind Ty Masarelli. Two men in the slot over to the far side. First down play, Masarelli rolling. Pressured, gets the ball away. Going to Quinn Campbell. But he's covered well and a good defensive effort that time by Piketon. And a good hard hit put on Campbell just as he went to make the reception. That time, Scott, the uh, Big Reds came out in a Twins formation last week against Martins Ferry. They utilized the trips and the tight trips formation quite a bit. And there they tried to go to the underneath man after running the two outside men deep. Pretty decent coverage there and uh, very close or near interference. Second down in 10 now. We'll set the Piketon defense for you after this play. Bel Air again with two men split out wide to the far side, and Masciarelli will be tied up underneath center with a split backfield behind him. Second down and 10, gives the handoff in the backfield, and that goes to Kenny Roth, number 30. Gets up about six yards on that carry, and it'll be second down, third down, that is, excuse me, in about four yards. Let's look at that Plankton defense, who the Big Reds will be challenging tonight. Up front, Bunch and Fife for the tackles, Parker and Thacker are at linebackers, Anderson and Lansing, outside linebackers, the Andrew Stepp and Peters, Montgomery is the safety, Jordan and Borders are at the corners. Might add, Scott, that that uh, defense of Piketon has only allowed 87 points this year and 8.7 average in the 10 regular season games. And the Bel Air Big Reds have a high-powered explosive offense. We'll see what the Piketon defense can do against them tonight. Third and five, Lacondish over the middle, can't hold on to the football. And it falls incomplete. The catch would have been good enough for a first down, but the incompleted pass will force Bel Air to send on the pun unit. So three and out for the Big Reds here on first down. Now you'll see here that they had a man open. A little pressure on Ty that time, and uh, Lacondas was open in the middle. It been good enough for the first down, you say, but just the ball slipped out of his hands. And you can see the rain on that shot down from the field level is coming down at a pretty good rate. As we look up at the uh, light standards here at Salzburger Stadium, it is raining. It's quite cool right now. So on fourth and five, the Bel Air Big Reds forced to punt. Good snap. Matterkoski gets the kick away and gets a good bounce off the kick. In fact, it takes a good Bel Air bounce all the way over the 20-yard line, and it'll be down there. And that's where Plankton will start off their first drive of the night. Let's go ahead and look at that Plankton starting offensive setup. As the Red Streaks take to the field, Fife is the center. Bunch and Montgomery are the tackles. Montgomery... Uh, excuse me, Osborne and uh, Ballastra are the guards. The tight end is Matt Parker. Shannon Jordan is the split end. Herb Stepp, along with the fullback, is Thacker. Montgomery, the quarterback, is Matt Anderson, number 10. First and 10. Handoff goes right up the middle, and not much doing that time. Maybe a gain of one with the Big Reds defense right there to stop that play. Well, Scott, talk about the Big Reds defense, and they really came alive last week in the second half against Martins Ferry. We're going with a no-huddle offense right here real quick. Anderson to the air, has his man. Pass caught that time to Josh Montgomery. Breaks a tackle, gets up over the 30 to 35, and he's out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. Let's quickly try and set that Bel Air Big Reds defense if we can for you. Well, the Red Streaks are going with the no-huddle offense once again. Connor and Poe are up front along with Chirpish and Carter and Ostrander. Preston and Taylor, the linebackers. Lacondis, DeLong, Snyder, and Matarkoski are the men in the defensive backfield for the Big Reds. A gain up to the 36-yard line gives Piketon first and 10 from there. Gain of 15 on that play. Anderson running the option down the line. Quick pitch in the backfield. Has his man, but there is Rich, or excuse me, Clint Lacondis who flies into the backfield and puts the hit, and it'll go down for about a five-yard loss. 
At that time, the uh, first play they ran the uh, option uh, action. That time they did run the counter option, and the quarterback pitched the ball back. And uh, good reaction by the uh, Bel Air uh, secondary, Clint McCondas. Quickly back up to the line of scrimmages. Plankton from that no-huddle set. Pass intended from Anderson that time to his wide receiver, number 44, Kyle Thacker. A little bit over his hand. He goes off of his fingertips. It's incomplete. It'll bring up third down and 14 now. Ball is on the 32-yard line for Plankton. Scott, I said, uh, started to say earlier that the Bel Air defense really came alive in the second half against Martins Ferry last week. They've only given up 94 points on the year for a 9.4 average, and uh, they rise to the occasion when need be. So you're talking about two pretty good defensive ball clubs going out of here tonight between Piketon and Bel Air. Third and long, third and 14. Anderson trying to set up the screen, pressure down to the backfield, gets his pass away, nearly intercepted. Clint McConish had a shot at it, would have had wide open turf toward the end zone, but has it go off his hands. Nonetheless, it'll set up fourth down, and Piketon will be forced to punt, and the Big Reds crowd on the near sideline comes to their feet. Here you'll see on the replay, they try to set up the screen. He looked off to the left, a lot of pressure here. Then he threw the ball out in the flat and almost picked off an intercepting. But uh, being that Bel Air can field this punt here, uh, they're going to get pretty good field position. Ryan Snyder and Richie Matarkowski are the two men back deep to receive this punt. High wobbly kick that's going to bounce in front of Matarkowski. He'll let it roll. It'll fall dead at about the 34-yard line. And that's where it'll be down. So Bel Air will get their second offensive possession here. Pretty good field position to start off at the 34. You know, talking about the weather here tonight, the rain is continuing to fall. The field is in pretty good condition, really, to uh, say the least. Our David Bloomquist is on the sidelines tonight and joins us now with more. David? Hey, Scott, it's raining out here if you didn't already know that. Hey, one thing Coach Magistra told me before the game, look for Bel Air to try to exploit Piketon's blitzes. Piketon likes to blitz. In this kind of weather, you can't get footing. Should give Massarelli time, and he's going to look for them blitzing and look for an open receiver. All right, David, talk about tough footing. Clint Lacondish has it there on that first down carry. In fact, he just gets back around to the line of scrimmage and then falls down as he tries to cut. Yeah, the footing is going to be a little tough out there. I walked uh, along the field mm -hmm. before the game, Scott, and it's pretty soft, and as the game progresses, it's going to get torn up, especially in the middle of the field, and that's going to be tough footing. Second down at about 10 as he gets just back to the line of scrimmage. Two men split out wide to the near side. Split backfield behind Masciarelli. Handoff in the backfield goes to Kenny Roth. Breaking tackles and he's wide. Got wide open running room open midfield and down to the Piketon 45-yard line before he's finally brought down. Great run that time by number 30, Kenny Roth. Scott Degree. Great job up front on that left side, and you'll see him break through here by uh, Jim McFeely, a uh, senior, six foot two thirty, and J.J. Schmidley, uh, six four two thirty, and they did a nice job opening up the hole there for Lacondas. There, uh, he took the ball off the uh, left side and got big yardage. First down now, ball at the Piketon 45-yard line. Masarelli sends his two wideouts now to the far side. Gives a quick pitch in the backfield to Clint Lacondas. Breaks one tackle with a strong spin move, gets over the 40-yard line and down to about the 37-yard line before he's tackled there. So another good game for Bel Air on first down, a gain of close to about eight yards. Here we see with the twins to the uh, top of our screen here, and uh, he just kind of shakes off a couple tacklers and keeps on moving upfield. But there's a penalty on that play. Holding will be the call against the Bel Air Big Reds. So what had gone as an eight-yard gain for them will now be penalized back 10 yards from the spot of the foul, and we'll see where the ball is placed down. So a costly penalty there for Bel Air after it had appeared that they had picked up eight yards on that play. Holding is the call against the Big Reds, and the ball will be marked now back over midfield and back into Bel Air territory at about the 48-yard line. So what had been marked down on about the 37-yard line of Piketon goes all the way back down to the Bel Air 48-yard line. So a loss of around 11 yards. Scott, I apologize there. Uh, I said Lacondas on that play before. I was uh, in a mistake. It was Kenny Roth with the great run. There's Quinn Campbell, the strong fullback, getting over midfield and back into Piketon territory. He's down to the Piketon 45-yard line. So a good gain that time. And you know, talking with Coach John Magistro this week, and we see it here again on the replay, it's a good, strong effort by Quinn Campbell. 
There's so many guys now that Bel Air has that are really turning in good efforts. We saw Jimmy Preston last week against Martin Sperry. Quinn Campbell, you mentioned his name, along with Kenny Roth out of the backfield, Clint Lacondas, Richie Matter, Richie Matterkoski, uh, Ty Massarelli. So many weapons for them that really everybody's taking part in this strong Bel Air offense. Yeah, they can hurt you in a lot of different ways. Here's that tight trips formation we talked about they used last week a good bit. One man in the backfield, but now here comes Lacondas in motion. Rolling out is Massarelli, pressured by Pikin. It'll be dropped at midfield. A loss of five yards that time on the sack. Five David Lundquist the mentioned that Pikin's going to want to blitz a lot, and they're going to send a lot of guys at Massarelli. They did that time, and it's a loss of five. They yeah, hear a good defensive play. Uh, good contain on the outside. Forced Ty to go inside, and then they had people on the inside to be able to come up with a big defensive stop. Kyle Thacker, the man who finally brought down Ty Massarelli. It's a loss of five back to midfield. It'll be third down and 15 now for the Big Reds. You know, Scott, uh, David made a good point earlier when he talked about the blitzes. But, you know, Bel Air's a type of offensive team that can utilize a short passing game to offset those blitzes. Twin wideouts to the near side. Masciarelli on a seven-step drop. Going downfield towards Richie Matterkoski, and he makes a sliding catch and goes out of bounds over the 30 at about the 29-yard line. Great sliding reception that time by Richie Matterkoski, and a good ball as well. Thrown by Ty Masciarelli, put it where only his receiver would be able to come down with it. Ty right on the money that time, and you'll see on the replay here, uh, they had a couple defenders there, and Richie just kept his eye on the ball all the way, and the ball was right on the money, and he made a nice sliding catch there. Ball Big over the 30-yard line. It's marked at the 29. First and 10 now for Bel Air from there. They'll send two wide outs split to the far side. Matter Koski along with Frankie Hibbets. Split backs behind Masciarelli. Gives the handoff to the first man through. That's Kenny Roth. And give him about two that time on the first down handoff. Quinn That's Campbell Quinn Campbell, excuse Bel me, Quinn Campbell on the carry. Give him two. We'll call it second down and eight. Bel Air kind of relying on that running game right now, although they came up with a big uh, first down pass last play, but uh, you know, getting a good job out of the running backs and the offensive line to move that football. Second down at about eight now for Bel Air. On a turning clock, we're down to 540 remaining here in the opening quarter. No score yet from Salzburger Stadium here in Zanesville. Massarelli back to pass. Nowhere to throw it, so he's going to rain it right up the gut. He's got running room, gets over the 25, and gets down to about the 23-yard line. He'll still be about three yards shy of the first down. It's going to be third down and three now for Bel Air. But, Coach, that's where Ty Massarelli can hurt you because you force him out of the pocket, and he's got the great ability to run in the open field. Very dangerous. And, of course, you know, think about Ty as being an outstanding passer, which he is, over 2,000 yards and 28 touchdowns. But uh, he's also rushed for 425 yards and 10 touchdowns. And when they spread you out like that, that puts a lot of pressure on the defense. And that time he took it off right up the middle. David DeLong split out wide to the near side. It's Matter Koski to the far side. Massarelli under center. Lacondis and Campbell in the backfield. They'll give the ball to Quinn Campbell. Makes a nice cut at the line of scrimmage and gets enough yardage for the Bel Air first down. Reaching near the 16-yard line. They'll actually mark him down right at about the 17, but that game will go for a Bel Air first down. Right here you'll see the quick hitter up the middle, and uh, we talked earlier about the blitz package that uh, the Piketon Red Streaks bring to this game, and sometimes people have to live or die by the blitz, and sometimes you do blitz and get in and throw them for a loss, but other times you'll get hurt. Sometimes being sealed off the line of scrimmage and that back breaks through, he's gone. Come out with Matter. Koski split to the far side, and Lacondas this time split out wide to the near side. Masarelli on a seven-step drop. Pressure going over the middle to Kenny Roth. He has it. He's over the five and down near the goal line. Stopped at about the one-yard line. Masarelli put it right there for Kenny Roth. Made a nice reception and worked his way down near the goal line. Stopped just short at the one-yard line. Scott, well-designed play right there by the Big Reds. A great call by the coaching staff. And what they did is they ran the outside man off, and uh, they had to go with him and slid uh, Roth right down in back of him, and he made the nice reception there, put the Big Reds in scoring position. Puts it right near the goal line. First and goal now for Bel Air. Ball on the one-yard line. Power eye backfield now with Lacondis, the top man. When Campbell lined up in front of him, they give it to Campbell, and he's... Into the end zone for a touchdown. Quinn Campbell goes in from one yard out, and Bel Air strikes first. 
They have a 6-0 lead. That time out of the power eye formation uh, right behind the offensive lineman, Jed LaRoche, center, Tom Poe, right guard, Aaron Chirpus, right tackle. They opened up the way, and they took it right on into the end zone. The Bel Air Big Reds strike first. They lead 6-0. Now that ever-important point after touchdown try for the Big Reds. On to attempt that is number 23. Of course, that's Justin Homer. Out of the hold of number 12, Frankie Hibbets. Here's the snap. The hold is down. The kick is up, and it is good. So Homer gives Bel Air a 7 0 lead. So the Big Red strike on their second possession of the evening. And take the early lead now over the Piketon Red Streaks. Took the Big Reds a little bit of time to get going, uh, acclimated uh, the field conditions and what have you, but that second offensive uh, series looked real good for the Big Reds, taking the ball right down the field, putting the end zone. I'll tell you, uh, from a coach's standpoint, the opposing coaches facing uh, uh, this Bel Air Big Red football team, it's a nightmare because, as you mentioned earlier, Scott, they have so many weapons, mm -hmm. so many different ways they can hurt you. You know, if it's not the run, it's the pass. If it's not the running backs breaking through, it's Ty breaking through as far as going back and running the ball. Great receivers, and of course, don't forget, an outstanding offensive line has done an excellent job all year long. You're right, and we check the City Hospital of Bel Air scoreboard. 7-0 in favor of the hometown Bel Air Big Reds right now. I have to put the ball back in play, though, and give it back over to Piketon, but impressive to be able to come out on your second drive, as you said, and move the ball down the field well, mixing both the run and the pass in there, and putting it in to the end zone for a touchdown. We still have that steady rain coming down. It's like a real fine mist, not a real heavy rain, but a fine mist that uh, right before the game, uh, actually it stopped a little bit, and then it started again, and we're probably going to have to put up with this all night. Snyder puts his foot to it, and he'll come down, and Piketon will be on the return. Brought back to number five. That's Donnie Borders to the near sideline. He's got some open running room and gets a good return up over the 35 to about the 37-yard line before he's run out of bounds. Piketon's had good returns on both a punt and then also on the uh, kick return there. Well, the special teams for Piketon, pretty impressive early on. The punt return team did well the last time, and the kick return team also a good return that time, giving piked in a pretty good uh, return up to the 37. Let's go down to our David Bloomquist. David? Thanks, Scott. After the touchdown, the crowd really got into it down here. A ton of fans from Bel Air making the trek to what is really Bel Air West. This is the fourth time in three years the Big Reds have played at this stadium, and uh, each time they've came away with a win. So, uh, really, they're home away from home, Scott. You're right, David. They've been uh, quite successful here in the past in postseason play with full wins in the last three years. They hope to make it five tonight. Piketon now with the eye set. And the quarterback, Anderson. Four ball goes to the top man, Montgomery, and he'll get a tough yard that time as he tries to go across the right side of the line. Maybe one. We'll call it second down at about nine after a short carry that time from Montgomery. If you notice there, it was a very unusual formation that time, Scott. On the right mm -hmm. side, they split their uh, right end and a right tackle out, and they inserted uh, the back number 34 the tight end Matt Parker in that position there in between those two guys and they tried to run off tackle second down and about nine ball on the about the 38 yard line Anderson again the handoff to Montgomery that time trying the far side gets a few yards it's up over the 40 into about the 42 yard line it'll be a gain of about three it's still going to be third down at about six now for Piketon that same formation that we talked about last play uh, as they ran before, uh, the same thing to the left side that time, and they tried to go that way. And whether that would be any indication to Blair staff that they'll be going to that side, that they're lining the tight end up in between the guard and tackle. Third down and six now for Piketon. Ball on their own 42-yard line. Anderson under center, rolling out here to the near side, looking downfield. Belair has it defensed well. Now he's forced back up in the pocket, and he'll be brought down. Just back at the line of scrimmage. Good job defensively that time by Bel Air. Robbie Williams in on the tackle that time for Bel Air. Along with number 59 as well. Tom Poe also in on the tackle for the Big Reds. So Piketon will be forced to punt once again with a fourth down and six situation. Richie Matterkoski and Ryan Schneider will line up deep back at about their own 25-yard line to accept this punt. After a couple straight runs, they tried to go to the bootleg action of the waggle. They had a guy deep, but he couldn't get the ball. He had too much pressure on him. Good snap. 
Back to Peters, and it'll be Manor Koski taking it and going down to the seat of his pants Peter at his own 23-yard line. So Bel Air will start really the deepest they've started in their own end all night long. They lead, though, 7 0 right now on the City Hospital of Bel Air scoreboard. We're still in the first quarter. Time, though, running down, under two minutes. Minute 49 remaining in the opening period here tonight from Salzburger Stadium in Zanesville. Glad you could join us for the News Channel 7 game of the week. Playoff action now in Ohio, of course, last night in West Virginia, the regular season wrapping up, and we'll have, of course, all the playoff pairings in West Virginia coming up for you tomorrow with Mike Anthony. Make sure you tune into the sports page tomorrow night at 11.15. Master Rally to the air, going to his man, passes caught by DeLong, he's over the 35, and up to about the 37-yard line that time. And that's good enough for a Bel Air first down, move the chains. A gain of about 13 that time on the pass pattern. Here you'll see on the replay, Scott, that they go to the air right away and they execute a uh, deep curl-in route. And uh, it was a well-thrown ball and a nice catch by David DeLong there. Pick up a big red first down. The Condus and Matt Urkoski are going to split out wide to the far side. In the backfield, it's Roth and Preston lined up behind Ty Massarelli. Quick hand off goes to Jimmy Preston. No, they did not give it to Preston or had there. Was it? I think yes, and it was fumbled. And the Bel-Air Big Reds luckily were able to jump back on the football. Preston came flying through the line of scrimmage and had the football, but once he got past the first wave of defenders, no longer Masarelli had the ball in his hand. And it's Ty Massarelli who ends up coming back up with it, as far as I could tell. We'll see here on the replay, however. You'll see here Preston hits the line very, very quick, and I think... Uh, Ty was going to pull out with the ball think, there. Yeah, he got right. hung up, and the ball went on the ground. Luckily, he got on it. Yeah, it looked like it was probably going to be the keeper or the option down the far side and uh, lost control of the ball that time on the fake with Preston. Nazarelli now. Boyce, and he's going to be sacked back at the 30-yard line. Drop for a loss. That time on the sack, Kyle Thacker, number 44 from his linebacker position. Nice job on pressuring Massarelli and puts him down for a big loss. Yeah, great pressure here, and Kyle Thacker moves through on the blitz on the inside, and uh, we had a couple receivers open right there, but he just couldn't get the ball off. Massarelli didn't have an opportunity to really check what he had downfield. Thacker was in there that quickly. Third and long now for Bel Air. Third down and 16. Ball on the 32-yard line. Masarelli now. Good. Time to throw the ball. Going to Matarkoski, and he makes the catch. Great reception by Richie Matarkoski. We've seen two fine catches here in the first quarter, and another one. And also, the other thing I like about that coach, he went past the first down marker, so when he would catch the ball, he would have enough yardage for the first down. Exactly, Scott. He knew exactly where he needed to go to get the first down. A well-designed play, well-executed. These are the kind of plays you'll see here on the replay that they work on day in and day out in practice. He got beyond the first down, uh, delivered to the outside of the field. He makes a diving catch and picks up a first down. David LeVong brings the play in from the sideline now for the Bel Air Big Reds. They pick up the first down and move the ball up to their own 48-yard line. It's first and 10 from there now for the Big Reds. Two wide out split to the near side. Massarelli under center again. Give the handoff to Clint Lacondis coming over to the near side. Drew looking to make a cut. Gets a good block and then spins over a man and gets over the Piketon 45-yard line and down to the 44-yard line. A gain of about eight on that carry, and it's going to be second down and about two. That time, a little sprint draw action to the tailback, Clint Lacondis. And, uh, you know, when you get a quarterback like Ty Massarelli, who rolls well to his right and left, and you hand off, you kind of freeze that defense a little bit. Big running room that time for Lacondis on the outside. That's the end of the first quarter here from Salzburger Stadium in Zanesville on the City Hospital of Bel Air scoreboard. The Big Reds lead 7 0. Back with second quarter action right after this on the News Channel 7 Game of the Week. Salzburger Stadium in Zanesville. Scott Oldie and James Costa here on the call for you tonight. And as we check the City Hospital of Bel Air scoreboard, it's 7 0 in favor of the Bel Air Big Reds. And we want to remind you that coming up at the end of tonight's ball game, We'll be naming the Belmont Savings Bank player of the game, so stay tuned for that at the end of the ball game. Jay and I will be deciding upon the Belmont Savings Bank player of the game. We talked, Scott, earlier about the uh, Red Streaks defense only allowing 87 points all year, but the high-powered offense of Bel Air Big Reds, 463 points, a 46.3 average. They have seven already, and are another would be a parent scoring drive right now. They look pretty good, and the handoff there going to... 
Kenny Roth. He gets down over the 30-yard line and down to about the hiked in 27-yard line before he stopped. A quick burst right up the middle by Kenny Roth, and he was past the line of scrimmage before you knew it even happened. Yeah, we talked uh, last time how quick they got through the line of scrimmage, and there's another example there, hitting the line of scrimmage with such quickness, and the offensive line just carving out some big holes there and getting that running game going. Ball on the 27-yard line, first down and 10 for the big wrench from there. Manarkoski splits out wide here to the near side, to the top side, it's Frankie. Frankie Hibbets, excuse me. Ty Massarelli under center. Hand off and the ball is fumbled. Trying to get it to Clint Lacondish and the Plankton Red Streaks are right on top of it. Number 34, Matt Parker, the fumble recovery. And just like that, the Bel Air Big Reds give the ball right back over to Plankton. Yeah, that time uh, Ty kind of tried to put the ball in there on a quick hitter again, but as you'll see on the replay, the ball kind of ended up on the hip right there and just slid out. It's getting a little slippery out there. Those kinds of things will happen. Very slick out there right now. And the rain continues to fall here in Zanesville. Still, as you said, Coach, kind of like a light, heavy mist that continues, really a heavier mist than light, continues to fall. But Piketon takes over, which picks in the backfield, goes to Montgomery, trying the far sideline, gets some running room there, and gets a good gain up to about the 36-yard line. It's going to be second down at about four now after a gain of about six that time on first down for Montgomery. Yeah, Montgomery's been their go-to man all year long, number 20. He's a senior, 5'7", 145, and uh, he's rushed for uh, 1,328 yards and 24 touchdowns this year. So a talented tailback, and uh, they're riding him right now. They've been using him heavily here on their every one of their drives so far in tonight's ball game. They come out with an eye set. He's the top man again. They'll give the handoff, though, to the first man through the fullback. Penalty flag comes in there as the backer reaches the 40-yard line, and he stopped right there. Wait and see what the penalty flag is all about here. Try to go with the uh, quick hitter inside off the option action again, and we've got a face mask call. Face mask call against the Bel Air Big Reds. So that'll be a big gain for Plankton here. There we get the call right there. Face mask against Bel Air, 15 yards. Takes it all the way down to the Bel Air 45-yard line. So Plankton gets into Bel Air territory with a first and 10 on the Bel Air 45-yard line. First down, Plankton at the Bel Air 45-yard line. Anderson under center. Three-step drop, looking for the quick hitter down the sideline, going for his man, Jordan, and just overthrows him. Trying to hit the split end, Shannon Jordan that time, a little too tall for him. He's 6'1", 165 pounds. He's a senior. That time, Matt Anderson uh, showed a pretty good arm, and, uh, you know, he's thrown the ball this year pretty well, uh, 78 for 100, out of 126 for 1,300 and some yards, 17 touchdowns, but that time just overshot the receiver. A little too long that time for his intended receiver. So it's now second and 10, ball on the Bel Air 45. Which pitch in the backfield goes to Montgomery, trying to turn the corner. Bel Air though right there, and how about Clint Lacondis? Coming right up to knock Montgomery back to midfield at the 50-yard line and laying him down, and Lacondis now goes down on the field. We hope it's nothing serious at all, but he's laying on the near sideline right by the Bel Air bench. Here it is on the replay. We'll see if we can see anything. You'll see uh, they strung them out pretty good right there. Give a lot of credit to number 73, Wes Carter, and Aaron Chirpus for kind of stringing it out. And also Jimmy Preston contained that time, and then Clint Lacondis came up and made the big hit. Looked like he was fine. He made the hit and then even attempted to go ahead and jump up to his feet. And after that, that's when he fell back down to the ground, favoring one of his legs. And we'll look at it here again on the replay. Lacondis there, number 15. Watch, he'll make the tackle. Looks to be, you know, rather routine. Then once he gets up, well, looked as kind of just kind of lost himself there. Looked as though, Scott, his right leg kind of got bent up underneath him. Mm -hmm. And I, when he came up, he tried to put some weight on that leg. I don't know that that is the problem. It's difficult for us to see here with all the players in front of the uh, bench down there. But uh, hopefully he'll be fine. Our David Bloomquist is right down there in the middle of all of it as they're working on Clint Lacondis. And we'll be getting a report off of him momentarily, I'm sure, but Lacondis looks like he's just fine as he's now up to his feet. And he'll be coming back over to the near sideline. But he looks to be just fine. It's 
Still a little limpy, though, as he comes uh, back behind the uh, front wall of the uh, sideline here for Bel Air. The trainers will be checking him out. Still, though, it's third down and long after that big loss. Anderson going right up the middle, makes a good cut, but then he's hit from behind and knocked down hard that time by number 85 for Bel Air. Glenn Ostrander, I think, on the tackle that time, knocking him down. No, give it to Chad Calder. I'm sorry. See on the replay here, the uh, Red Streaks run a little draw action, sprint draw action, a nice cut back to this side by uh, Josh Montgomery. Picks up good yardage, but they're still going to be faced with a fourth down situation, and they're going for it. It was Calder that time on the tackle. Good pursuit from the backside to come back for the tackle. Fourth and six. Anderson rolling, looking downfield, going for his receiver. It's tipped and incomplete. At his man that time, but a good job defensively turned in by Nathan Taylor to get his hand up and just tip the ball and knock it incomplete. Great job there by Nathan Taylor coming over. They had the man out of the backfield, Josh Montgomery open, and they tried to dump the ball to him short to pick up that first down, but a great defensive uh, effort there. Let's see if we can get more from David Bloomquist on exactly what happened to Clint Lacondas. David? Thanks, Scott. Clint's back out there right now. He's all right. When he made that tackle, he got a knee or a helmet in the hip. So it was a knee or a helmet in the hip, but he's okay. He's back in the game right now. Okay, David. Thanks for that report. And there goes Laconis. You can see him splitting out far to the wide side now. They'll give the handoff in the backfield. Looks like that went to Preston, I think, number 40. Or excuse me, it was 30. It was Roth. He comes over to the uh, sideline. They work both of those guys in and out of there so quickly. It's hard to know sometimes who's actually in the backfield. But that was Kenny Roth on the quick hitter. He gets a couple of yards. We'll call it second down and eight. David DeLong bringing the play now in from the sideline. Clock turning. We're down to nine and a half minutes remaining before halftime. It's seven to nothing in favor of the Bel Air Big Reds. DeLong splits out wide to the far side. The tight end is Snyder. Line up in the slot to the near side. And Matt Arkoski is split out wide to the near side. Masarelli on a deep drop, looking over the middle, wanting to go to Matterkoski, but he's going to be sacked and knocked down for a loss that time. Good defensive effort turned in by Todd Bunch and knocks him down for a loss back over the 35, down to the 34-yard line. He had Matterkoski open, but just as he broke open, so did Bunch right onto Masarelli. As you can see on your screen, you'll see on the replay, the biggest man on the field, junior Todd Bunch, 6'4", 305. Big sack. He is a bunch. Third and long. Third and 17 now. So a big loss that time on second down for the Big Reds. They're going to look to set up the screen. Going to Kenny Roth and nowhere to run that time. He's knocked right down as soon as he makes the reception. I believe it was 44 Thacker who was in on the tackle. Yeah, Thacker read that uh, real well all the way uh, that time, Scott. They try to throw the little flare route right here. And uh, he's right there to make the stop. Good hit by Kyle Thacker, knocking Roth back over the 30 and back to about the 27-yard uh, line. So it's fourth and a long. <laughs> and Bel Air will be forced to punt. Shannon Jordan is the man back deep to receive the punt here from the Big Reds. Matt Erkoski, the man to do the punting. High snap, still gets it, and boy, nearly blocked that time, but he gets the punt away. Sharp with it at his own 40-yard line, looking to make a cut, but he's slipping all over the place on the wet turf and knocked down hard that time. Nathan Taylor again in on the tackle that time for the Bel Air Big Reds. He was joined as well that time by Ryan Gonglick, also on the tackle. The great coverage there by the Big Reds on that uh, punt, but still uh, the Pike and Red Streaks are going to get pretty good field position here just across the 40-yard line. Real good field position to start this drive off with, as you say, on the 41-yard line. First and 10 for the Red Streaks. Sharp will split himself out wide over here to the near side. Anderson under center. An offset eye behind him. Gives the ball to the first man through and breaking tackles up near midfield to about the 50-yard line. Goes the ball carrier that time. Big gain on first down there, uh, Scott, and they hit quick. A quick hitter inside. And, you know, we talked about the Bel Air offense being uh, high-powered. This uh, Red Streaks offense has scored 427 points this year for an over 40-point average. So uh, we got two high-powered offenses here. Kyle Backer, the man on the carry last time. Split backs. 
Hand goes to Montgomery. He gets over the 50-yard line and looks like he's going to be very close to a first down. Looks like where they're marking it, he might be just short. Yeah, I think he's going to come up about uh, probably a ball or a ball and a half length short of that first down. It would still just be third down and short, though. They are going to measure, though. He looks to be about a yard or so short from where we're standing here in the press box. We're right about even with about the 45-yard uh, line. Time for a box. While we're waiting on this measurement, Scott, you know, uh, we talked about that high-power Bel Air offense. We also talked about the Red Streaks defense only allowing 87 points per uh, for the year, 8.7 per game. And right now, they're performing pretty well against this high-power Bel Air offense and holding Bel Air to seven points here. And, uh, you know, Bel Air is going to try to get things untracked, I'm sure. But right now, they're doing a pretty good job. Yeah. Pike, a very strong ball club coming in here, as you mentioned. Only allowing teams 8.7 points a game, a 9-1 record. Their only loss came to uh, Lucas Valley that uh, knocked off uh, the River Pilots last night by a final of 14-7. And I know you were down at that game and had a chance to uh, watch uh, Lucasville Valley. Really a game here, a short carry by Anderson. Stopped initially at the line of scrimmage, but he should have enough, and he will as he gets down to the Bel Air 48-yard line. You know, back to that River game last night, I don't think a team could dominate a game more and come away with a loss than the River Pilots did. That sure was a heartbreaking loss for the River Pilots, Scott. They did just exactly what you said. They dominated, totally dominated that ball game in all aspects. It boiled down to uh, Lucasville Valley executed two plays. Play from scrimmage, a long option for a touchdown, and they intercepted a pass and ran it back. Chris Lundy, their quarterback, made both plays. Other than that, River totally dominated. Great season ends, though, on a losing note, unfortunately, but the River Pilots still finish at 2-1. and one. Anderson has his pass knocked down right at the line of scrimmage. Anderson Great defensive effort that time from Aaron Chirp to get his hands up and knock the ball down. The six foot, 240-pound uh, junior, that senior, that is, excuse me, gets his hands up and knocks it right back down. And that time, first time we've seen the Pike and Red Streaks operate out of the run and shoot offense. Quarterback just raised up and tried to hit a quick uh, hitch pattern out there to the right, but great defensive effort there, knocking the ball down. Sherp has got his hands up and planted it right back down on the ground. Clock continuing to turn. We're down to 6.38 here, left to go before halftime. 7 nothing in favor of the Bel Air Big Reds. Trip split to the far side now. Anderson, deep drop, looking to set up the middle screen, has his man, but wow! What a hit leveled right there by Tony Arno. Nailing. I think that was Clint was Ostrander. Ostrander. Yeah. I thought it was 60 for a second, yeah. but it was Ostrander. You're right. Wow. Out of the trip formation, they try to set up the uh, middle screen here. Wow. Flanker screen. And what a hit. That's kind of what you call a little slobber knocker, boy. You knock him, and then you slobber a little bit. Great hit in there by Clint Ostrander. Ostrander plays that defensive end position so well against the run and against the pass that time, and wow, what that's, a huge hit there. That's welcome to Big Red football. Third down and 11. It was a loss of one on that play. Anderson now rolling, looking to go downfield. Good pressure from the Big Red. Just lobs it up there, but the ball is caught, and it'll be good enough for a first down. Pass caught that time by number one, Herb Stepp. Scott, we talked about the arm of Matt Anderson, and it wasn't really on a, a line that time, but he put the ball in there. It seemed to be several defensive players around. He kind of slips a little bit, then delivers the ball. There was one big red defender went up, tried to knock it down, but they made the catch, and they've got a first down. Matt Erkowski laid the hit on him there. Lacondis, I think, tried to come away with a tip ball or an interception at the time, just had it go over his outstretched arm. And for the reception, ball on the 36-yard line now, first and 10 for the Red Streaks. Pass intended and caught again, and still on his feet is Sharp. Over the 30-yard line, and finally brought down by Richie Matarkowski as he gets down to the 27-yard line. That time they went to the uh, short route there, the quick pass, and uh, Anderson uh, put the ball on the money, had pretty decent protection that time. Sharp makes a nice catch, or I should say Shannon Jordan. Yeah. I'm calling him Shannon Sharp. <laughs> Fingers are kind of used to play wide receiver. NFL. <laughs> Got to have that name right? Yes, exactly. Jordan that was on the reception. Second and one after the gain of nine. Gives the ball to Thacker, and I think he probably has it up for a first down. We'll have to wait and see here. Looks like he might still be just slightly short from the way the marker is on the far sideline. With the defensive, third down. 
Yeah, I think uh, it appears to me mm -hmm. it's going to be a little short. I don't know why we're, I don't think we're going to get a measurement. No, uh, now maybe they are going to measure. Third and very short. Now nope, we're going to go ahead and. Third and one for the red streaks here. Thacker is going to go out of the ball game. Montgomery stays in the backfield this time. Joined by Matt Parker, who's at the fullback now. Two wide out split to the far side. Anderson going to roll, but gives the hand up in the backfield to Montgomery, and he gets over the line and gets enough for the first down. Down to about the 23-yard line. There again, they went to that sprint draw action to Montgomery, and he just about squirted it through uh, for an even bigger gain than we got, but he does have the first down. He's a very elusive runner, kind of runs low to the ground, low center of gravity there, and even when he gets bumped, hard to knock him off his feet. So first down, they move the chains, ball on the 23-yard line. We're first under four minutes to play here in the opening half. Bel Air leading 7 to nothing. Pike and No trying to do something about that. I set now behind Anderson. Quick pitch in the backfield, goes to Montgomery, trying to turn the corner. He's got good blocks in front of him, makes a leap and jumps over the 20-yard line and down to about the 19-yard line. It'll go for a gain of about four on first down, and it'll be second down at about six. The ability there of uh, middle guard number 77, Aaron Chirpus, to run parallel to the line of scrimmage laterally at six foot, 240 pounds, kind of strung that thing out until the secondary is able to come up and make the stop. So it brings up second down and about six. Ball on the 19-yard line. I set again behind Matt Anderson. Shannon Jordan split out to the near side. Montgomery pass. wants to throw it. Now he's coming back to the near side. Pressured in the backfield. Tucks it under. Still looking to throw it. Going towards the end zone. Pass is caught by Jordan. He's over the five and knocked out of bounds at about the four-yard line. Ryan Snyder with the coverage that time and finally brought down Jordan. But, boy, good effort that time by Montgomery, who just continued to work and continued to look and finally found Jordan and lobbed the ball up to him. As you'll see on the replay, they ran the sweep before, and here we come back with the halfback pass, and it's great coverage in the end zone to their initial receiver there, but uh, Montgomery comes back to his left, throws the ball up for grabs, and a big catch right there, and they're in position by number, uh, number two, Shannon Jordan. Uh, first and goal now, ball on the four-yard line. Anderson gives it to Thacker. Dark Montgomery. Or that was Montgomery, I believe. Hard to tell on some of these jerseys now with all the mud that are starting to gain on the back of those numbers. And it's now going to be second and goal, ball on about the three. Let's go down to Bloomquist. David? Scott, thanks a lot. There's no greater equalizer in football than weather. It can make a very good team mediocre, make a mediocre team even better. Right now, this game has really come down to one thing, and that's footing. Who has it and who doesn't? Right now, Python's definitely got the edge as far as cutting and getting their feet underneath them. Second and goal, ball on the three. Handoff goes to Montgomery, and he's going to be knocked down on the backfield for a loss. Chirp has broke through that time to offer some pressure in the backfield that time as would not allow Montgomery to turn the corner. Tom Poe also went on the tackle that time as well for the Bel Air Big Reds, big number 59. Nowhere to run that time. Uh, they lined up strong to the right that time and tried to go off the right tackle, but excellent big pursuit there. Big down here. We're at a minute 35 remaining. It's third and goal from about the six. See what Pikeman would elect to do should Bel Air stop him here on third and goal. Anderson gets the handoff to the man coming around the corner. Wide open running room and into the end zone. Touchdown for Josh Montgomery. I believe that's Montgomery or is that number 80? Now those numbers are getting a little bit hard to see right now, but I think you're correct. I think it's Lansing, it was 80. Yeah, number 80, Ryan Lansing. There we go on the reverse. Lansing got a good block in front of him and gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Well-designed play right there. They'd be going off the right side several times, and that time they faked the action off the right side and handed the ball back to Brian Lansing, a senior, 5'8", 154 pounds, and he took the ball in for a score. Well, the ever-important point after touchdown try. And you talk about trying to get your footing. This is where you need to have your footing now. It's Todd Bunch. And if there's somebody that could put a foot to the ball, I think it would be Bunch. Todd's a big boy, as we mentioned, 6'4", 305. Got 305 pounds to put behind the ball. All he needs here is just to put it up straight. They're going to fake it. Rolling out is Anderson. Going towards the end zone, and it's caught for the conversion. They went to Lansing again, number 80. He makes the catch on the conversion. And just like that, 
The Pike and Red Streaks have a one-point lead at eight to seven. Yeah, here we'll see off the uh, extra point, the fake. The uh, holder just uh, raises up and rolls to his right, finds the receiver, number 80, Brian Lansing, in the back of the end zone helps for two you, points. Helps when your holder is your quarterback. That sure does. And that's what most teams usually try to do, or at least somebody they know who does have a decent throwing style, so if they want to try something like that. And Anderson puts Brian it right Lansing there to Brian points. Lansing for the two points. And just like that, it's 8-7. Back to seven. down to David. What do you have for us, David? Hey, Scott, the last time the Bel Air, Bel Air offense uh, didn't get anything going, they came in, and uh, some of the guys were complaining about footing and things of that nature. And Coach Magistro looked at him. He goes, are you guys going to cry, or are you going to do something about it? And they all looked back at him. They said, we're going to do something about it. And they're going to get a chance right here to do something with a minute 24. Let's see if they're true to their word. All righty, David. They do have a minute 24 still remaining here in the opening half to try and do something with the ball here. An impressive drive that time by the Red Streaks. It sure was, Scott. Uh, you know, uh, coming in, we talked about the, you know, the uh, explosiveness of both teams. A lot of points scored, but they put together a real nice drive, mixing the run, the pass, went right down the field and scored, and then the fake extra point to get the 8-7 lead. So Pike will put the ball back into play, and Bel Air will get another shot out of here. And a high end-over-end -end kick that's going to come back, and it'll be returned. That's Nolan. Up over the 20, up over the 22, and go about the 23-yard line. So Nolan brings it out to the 23, and so that's where Bel Air will start here with a minute 17 remaining before half. They're trailing by one, eight to seven. A lot of enthusiasm, a lot of momentum on that red streak sidelines after that drive and that score and go ahead. So uh, Bel Air is going to have to try to put some things together here offensively with only a little over a minute to go. They've shown the ability to move the ball down the field quickly. They are a quick strike offense when need be, and we'll see if they attempt to do any of that right here or not. Little quick option behind the back pitch to Matter Koski, and he's got wide open running room over the 30. High steps a man over the 35, and he's out of bounds at about the 40 yard line. How about that play right there? Looked like uh, he threw that ball behind his back. It's exactly Looked like Magic Johnson back there at quarterback. That's exactly what he did, and you'll see it on the replay. He just tied, goes to his left, and took his left hand and just threw it behind his back on a basketball pass to Richie Matarkowski. We saw that uh, executed several times with Jose Davis, mm -hmm. quarterback for the Big Reds. Yeah, I think he's doing a little something in Kent right now, isn't he? And working his magic at Kent <laughs> State, you better believe it. Breaking some Mac in school records this season. I think the Golden Flashes uh, got a great break when they had to start using Jose Davis at quarterback. They realized what talent they have. Mazzarelli now forced, and he's going to be dropped for a loss, and there's a penalty flag as well. As Mazzarelli is dropped for a loss back over the 30 to about the 29-yard line. That's not what you need right now of a minute one remaining. Good coverage at the uh, time downfield by the Red Streaks. Ty didn't have anyone to go too deep. He was looking in the flat to his right, but uh, there just wasn't anybody to throw to. You can see him looking over to Quinn Campbell, and then uh, we had a push in the back here. Uh, and the Bel Air Big Reds are going to get a penalty tacked onto that. So the big play they executed earlier to Richie Matikoski is going to be nullified here by a penalty. Yeah, penalty, the sack and the penalty there really hurt. And the ball is at the 29-yard line now. And we're under a minute here as far as the time is concerned. And the clock is winding, as you said, Coach. And the Big Reds just coming out of the huddle now. Laconis winds up wide to the far side. It's Matikoski split out to the near side. Roth and Campbell in the backfield. Over the middle for his man. Pass is caught by Nolan. He's got wide open running room. He's over the midfield of that Snyder. He's over the 40 and down to about the 36-yard line. Ryan Snyder makes the catch. And gets a great run all the way down to the Red Streak's 36-yard line. And there's still 33 and a half seconds remaining before the half. And the Big Red's going to take a timeout, but we look at it on the replay here. Dumps the ball over uh, the middle. A real nice job by Ryan Snyder catching the football and running with it. And the Big Reds are now down in the scoring position. Big Reds are taking a timeout. Come over to the near sideline to talk things over. And right now they're on the Piketon 37-yard line. Let's go ahead and take a break. Back with the final 33.6 seconds of the first half right after this. Salzburger Stadium in Janesville. Scott Oley and Jay Costa in on the City Hospital of Bel Air scoreboard. Piketon leads right now 8-7. There's 33.6 seconds remaining in the opening half. Bel Air 
after a great pass and catch to Ryan Snyder. Has the ball on the Piketon 37-yard line, as we said, with a little over 33 seconds remaining before the half. Give credit to that offensive line, Scott. Chirpus, uh, Poe, LaRoche, McFeely, Schmidley. They did a heck of a job that time, giving uh, Ty time. Masarelli looking again. over the middle to Lacondas, a little bit too far in front of him, and it goes incomplete. Well, he doesn't use much time on the clock. There's still 29 seconds, nearly 30 seconds, 29.8 remaining before the half. Basically, that time we had four receivers in the route. We had the two wide outs going down the outside of the field. And we had Snyder, the tight end, going down the middle, middle and Lacondas also coming out of the backfield on the left side going down the middle. That's a difficult pattern to cover, especially when you're in too deep. Lacondas is split out wide to the top. That's Matarkoski split out to the bottom here, and Snyder, the tight end. Masarelli going downfield toward has his man. Pass is caught by Ryan Snyder again, and he gets out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. Ryan Snyder with two impressive catches so far on this drive. Here we see it on the replay again. Great blocking up front by the Big Reds line. Ty delivers a ball and a great fingertip catch there by Ryan Snyder. He goes out of the bounds and stops the clock. The Big Reds are working this offense to perfection and looking like a professional team in the last two minutes. They've used this clock very well, the time remaining on it. Still, they have 23.8 seconds remaining before half. Massarelli. Short drop. Now he's going to run it right up the middle. Looking for some blocks. Has him. He's, he's over the five. He needs to get one around one more man. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown. Ty Massarelli. What a run. Goes in from 22 yards out. And he works his magic one more time. And just like that, the Bel Air Big Reds take the lead back. Scott, you talk about execution. I'll tell you, this Bel Air Big Reds offense, every time I see them, they do more amazing things. And right here, they had him pass conscious. And Ty just uh, came out of the middle there and took it to the outside and found a way to get in the end zone right there. Just something that's very, very it's difficult like to defend. Donnie Borders was the last man, number five, who had a shot Thank at him. Know. And Massarelli oh. did a great job to work his way around Borders and into the end zone for the score. Homer on. One after touchdown try is up. And it's good. So just like that, the Bel Air Big Reds come back and take a 14-8 lead on the City Hospital of Bel Air scoreboard. There's still 14.1 seconds remaining, and you talk about some great clock management on a drive. How about that? <laughs> great execution, Scott. You know what makes that even better, that drive, is the fact that after executing a, an unusual play there and picking up big yardage, they had a sack and they had a penalty, mm -hmm. and they didn't panic, and they overcame that and drove the ball down the field, hitting some nice routes, stopping the clock and then of course the last play the scramble that just shows you how uh, potent how powerful this Bel Air Big Red offense is of course as we said earlier coming at it up at the conclusion of tonight's ball game we'll be choosing a Belmont Savings Bank player of the game and on that drive at least it probably was Ty Masarelli Ryan Snyder though had two important catches they got the Bel Air Big Reds into the scoring position for that touchdown you know, Scott, earlier David mentioned about Coach Magistro telling his players to quit worrying about the footing and get with it, and uh, they said they were going to play, and that's exactly what they're doing. And they got right back as soon as they got the ball, and they did something with it. A low little squib kick will come down. Picked up, and it he's was picked up knee. by Lansing, and when he grabbed the ball, he was on his knee, so he's automatically down right there at about the 31-yard line. Still, there is 12.9 seconds remaining here in the opening half, and Bel Air enjoying a 14-8 lead right now over Piketon after a very impressive touchdown drive right after Piketon had just taken the lead on a two-point conversion to give him an 8-7 lead. The Big Reds come right back, storm down the field, and after you said, after a penalty and a sack that had knocked him back after an impressive play that put them uh, in good field position, they were knocked back behind the 30 to their own 29, Still, though, put it together and got it all the way down for a score. High set now here. Twin wideouts to the near side. And Piketon's going to hand the ball off to the top man. That's Montgomery. He's got some running room, but Bel Air will concede that, obviously, as time will run out here in the opening half. Or no, the Piketon red streaks will take a timeout. We talked earlier about the enthusiasm and the momentum that the uh, Piketon red streaks had when they scored and then uh, converted on a two-point fake conversion there to go ahead. But whatever momentum and enthusiasm they had, it's uh, the Big Reds 
have quieted that side of the field tremendously with that great impressive drive. And they have the ability to do that. You can uh, find yourself, you think, right back in the ball game or in a good position, and uh, you turn around, and all of a sudden, there they are. They just stuck another one in the end zone on you. And uh, as we said, they have the ability of a quick strike offense, and they proved it on that drive, especially moving the ball downfield. They got the ball back, I think, with about, what, a minute 14 remaining or so after the kick return, and they moved it down and put the uh, score into the end zone and uh, just a great drive. They used up less than a minute on that drive to put it into the end zone. Yeah, that was an impressive drive, as we said. And, uh, you know, we've got a lot of experienced people on that offensive uh, team for Bel Air. They got 10 seniors and one junior. And that experience and that uh, comes in handy at this particular point in time. Now, I tell you, what a job this coaching staff does as well because uh, these players are so well-schooled about they know when they get the ball, they need to get out of bounds to stop the clock and things like that. And it's just little things like that. But this Bel Air team has been so well schooled over the years, over the, all their runs for the state championship games over the past uh, three years. Quick throw goes out to the far side. Pass is caught by Jordan. He gets up to midfield and goes out of bounds as the first half clock winds out. And that's the half. The Bel Air Big Reds have a lead of 14 to 8 right now over the Piketon Red Streaks. And our David Bloomquist is down with Bel Air head coach John Magistro. David, take it away. Thanks a lot, Scott. Coach, uh, your assessment of the first half? Well, you got to give Piketon a lot of credit. They came ready to play. Our guys aren't ready to play. And we're going to see at halftime if we can pick it up a little bit. I, I heard you mention that the guys on the sidelines, uh, you told your, some of your offensive players, are you going to cry about it or are you going to do something about it? And you guys went down and scored. That at least has to make you pretty happy. Right, and we got to add to it a little bit more the second half. Right now, uh, we're feeling sorry for ourselves. We're uh, a little distressed because we're, we haven't had this happen to us, and uh, we're going to just try to square it away at halftime. Last question. Any adjustments for the second half? Well, we're going to do something with the unbalance. We're going to see what we can do. Uh, right now, I just think it's bad. They threw a few balls over our heads, and uh, that's about it. Okay, thank you, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Coach John Magistro, back up to you, Scott. All righty. Thanks a lot, David. We are at halftime right now. It's 14-8 in favor of the Bel Air Big Reds on the City Hospital of Bel Air scoreboard. Back with halftime festivities right after this. In Zanesville, and let's go down to the field and take a listen to the Pike and Red Streaks marching band.
football team, but uh, week in, week out, fine performance by the Bel Air Big Red uh, marching band under the direction of Daryl Davis, a good friend of mine, and he does a tremendous job there. So let's take a listen to this Big Red Band. for a closer. 
featuring Kara Alexa on trumpet. The band will perform Love Me Tender. puts his foot to it and it'll bounce down and it's lost there and have to go all the way back inside the five yard line to pick it up I believe that's landing but he's got some big time running room and slips as he gets up to the 30 yard line or he had a wide open uh, turf in front of him over here to the near sideline but turns what could have been a disastrous kick and a pretty good field position for the red streaks Scott some uh, stats from that first half uh, Ty Massarelli was 8 for 11 for 127 yards and uh, rushing uh, 20 carries for 65 yards. First downs, uh, Piketon, uh, uh, well, I guess that's not near yeah, Piketon for a tie, was sacked three times. Uh, Piketon had 44 yards rushing, six for 11 for 50 yards passing. On first down here. Play that goes up to about the 33 yard line. Kyle Thacker, they carry that time. It's a gain of about four or so, and we'll call it second down and six now. And Piketon did have seven first downs in that first half, Scott. And, uh, you know, basically they've got a, uh, here you see the stats here uh, for Bel Air, eight for 11, 127, as I said, uh, for Ty, 20 carries for 65 yards. And there's a passing, six for 11 for 50, and a net rushing of 44 yards and seven downs for the Red Streaks. And, uh, you know, talking about the uh, Red Streaks, they're pretty much a, a young football team offensively. They have five seniors, four juniors, and two sophomores in that starting offensive lineup. Defensively, they have five seniors, five juniors, and one sophomore in the starting lineup. Penalty flag on this last play, and the call is going to go against the Big Reds. I was looking at the stats, and I kind of missed that, so Same I have no here. idea what that is, Scott. They're getting ready to mark the penalty off. We'll see if we get another call here from the official or not as to what it is. It's a five-yard penalty. And moves the ball up to the 39-yard line. It's still going to be short of a first down. It'll be second down and one. A little substitution. Illegal right. substitution, apparently, the penalty against the Big Reds. Handoff, that goes to Thacker. And he gets up over the 40, over the 45. Keeps his forward progress middle. over to the 46. That's good for a Piked in first down on the move to Chains. So Backer has shown uh, some good ability to run with the football. 
good quickness mm -hmm. uh, into the uh, line of scrimmage, and he kind of got through there before uh, anybody got a hold of him. Uh, nice gain there. Not bad for a fullback here. Looking down, he had over 900 yards rushing this year and 14 touchdowns. That's good production out of your fullback position. Sure is. And off goes to the top man. That's Montgomery who gets up to about midfield and just gets over the midfield strive. He's just inside Bel Air territory. That'll be a gain of about five, and it'll be second and five now for the Red Streaks in Montgomery as well. We mentioned this in the first half. You did coach over 1,300 yards rushing and 24 touchdowns. So that's 38 touchdowns combined out of those two men in the backfield. And then you throw in Matt Anderson with 17 touchdown tosses as well. And you mentioned it. This team has the ability to put a lot of points on the scoreboard. Red Streaks now run the option down to the near sideline and wide open running move from Matt Anderson, and he is going to go. Anderson will go 50 yards into the end zone for a Piketon touchdown. That hole just was wide open when he ran the option down the line to the near side. There was nobody there to stop him, and Matt Anderson sprints 50 yards into the end zone for a red streak touchdown. You'll see on the replay here, he comes to the uh, left, and he was looking to pitch the ball, but there was no one there to take him on the option, which Bel Air had done a real good job earlier on the option of doing, and he takes it right down the field for a touchdown. We're tied at 15, uh, tied at 14, that is, excuse me, tied at 14, and the ever-important point after touchdown try is coming up next, and of course, that's Todd Bunch who will be trying the extra point kick here, but remember the last time they scored, as you see it now on the City Hospital of Bel Air scoreboard, they banked it with Anderson rolling out to the right and going to the end zone for a two-point conversion. Kick is up, and it is good this time. So just like that, Piketon comes right out and puts a touchdown on the scoreboard and takes a one-point lead over the Bel Air Big Reds at 15-14. Boy, Plankton, we said they have an ability to score quickly, and Matt Anderson that time rambling 50 yards on a touchdown run, gets into the end zone, and just like that, Plankton with a one-point advantage. And on the first half, after having a 7-0 lead, uh, the Big Reds were stunned by a nice drive by the Red Streaks, and then they faked that extra point and got on top, a lot of momentum, and uh, they had to come back and score at the end of the half to get ahead, but here again, the second half, the Red Streaks strike pretty quickly a nice drive put together great job on the option that time so uh, maybe another wake-up call here for the big reds uh, they're gonna have to come out and go to work again on offense of course the last time Piken scored just prior to the end of the first half the big reds got the ball back with only a minute 14 remaining in the second quarter and worked the ball down for a touchdown in less than a minute so now there had answered Piken score the first time we'll see if they can answer it on the upcoming drive here well, Scott, you know, we've mentioned before in other ball games uh, on this playoff trail in regular season, what a great following the Bel Air Big Reds have. Their fans here, even though Pike didn't just score, their uh, Bel Air fans on their feet cheering their young men on, and that's the type of crowd that follows them week in and week out. You're right. No matter where they're at, if they're playing in Nelson Field or you name it, you name a stadium somewhere, there'll be a huge throng from Bel Air there to root their team on. And I know coming out I-70 this afternoon to uh, Zanesville, there was a large crowd of folks with Belmont, Ohio license plates making their way out this week. Short kick comes up, and it's returned nicely that time by Nolan up over the 35 to about the 37-yard line. Nolan does a great job on those kick returns and has gotten Bel Air good field position every time he's returned the ball. And nonetheless here, gets some good field position up to the 37-yard line. Well, we'll see what the big, big Reds do here on their first series in the second half offensively. They've been effective running the football at the end of the half, throwing the football real well. So we'll see what they go to here with a twin set to the right, two in the backfield. Two in the backfield, as you said, twins to the right, Master Rally under center, tight end to the far side. Hand off to the first man through. That's Quinn Campbell. He's got good running room. Stays on his feet. He's over midfield. Nearly breaks another tackle and gets down to the Red Streak's 41-yard line. Great carry that time from the fullback, Quinn Campbell. Well, Scott, the Big Reds came back with a little bit of the option version there themselves. I mean, they gave to the inside man, number three, Quinn Campbell, and he broke off that right side behind the blocking of Aaron Chirpus and Tom Poe. And you'll see it here on the replay replay where he takes it right up the middle real quick and busts through a couple would-be tacklers here. Been very impressed at the Bel Air Big Reds running backs and their ability to get those extra yards. Puts that head and shoulder down and just runs over a couple of guys. The option again. This time Campbell holds on to it and couldn't tell there if Masarelli really wanted to give him the ball or not that time. 
Campbell, though, does keep the ball and just gets about a yard or so up to the 40. It'll be second down and nine. Well, Scott, there's a couple ways to run that option. Actually, there's several ways. There's a, a predetermined uh, that you're going to give to the fullback inside mm -hmm. or you're going to come out and read the end or the outside linebacker and maybe pitch the ball. It looked to me that time like he was reading the defense and holding on to the ball until the last second. Second down and nine. Massarelli rolling to the near side, looking, has Campbell wide open, and he just can't come down with the reception. He had big-time running room in front of him, and he would have been down at about the 20, or excuse me, down about the 25-yard line. Would have been good enough for a first down, but it'll be now third down for the Big Reds, and about seven. Third is, and seven. That is a play they uh, execute so very well. That was a misdirection crossing route there. They run the uh, wide out, David DeLong, number 27 deep, and bring Quinn Campbell from the backside on a crossing route, dump the ball to him. He was wide open, but just off the fingertips. So a big third down play here, third and seven from the 38-yard line. Masarelli under center, fakes the handoff to Roth, going down over the middle. Manarkoski has it. He's at the 10 and down to the five-yard line. Richie Manarkoski on a well-thrown ball and a well-run pattern that time. Those two guys were right on top of each other, and Manarkoski takes it over the five and to the four. Well, we talked about the different weapons on this offensive uh, unit, and you'll see here, take the sprint draw action, and then Ty steps up in the pocket, drills the ball to Manarkoski, number 32, right over the middle, and the Big Reds are in business at about the seven-yard line. You're right, they'll mark his knee down at the six. It'll be first and goal from there now for the Big Reds. And just like the last time, Trying to answer a Piketon touchdown score. First and goal from the six. One man in the backfield. The tight trips to the near side. Lacondis will go in motion now again. And a penalty flag. Penalty flag a legal procedure, field. I think, against Bel Air. I think exactly that's what we're going to get here. A little legal procedure. They uh, kind of shifted over from one side to the uh, other and then got into a tight trips there to the right. And that brought uh, Clinton Lacondis in motion. But they were an illegal procedure, so that's going to cost them five yards. She'll move the ball back to the 11. It's still first and goal from there. And actually, when you're at the 11, it gives Bel Air a little more time to work and room to work with some pass patterns if they do elect to throw the football. Now, here's where it's, uh, you know, where it's so tough to defend Ty Massarelli, especially when he drops back to pass, as we saw early right. in the first half. Come because up. It's hard to defense him when he takes off and runs the ball. Tight trips now to the far side. Snyder, the tight end, lined up to the near side. That's Kenny Roth coming in motion. They fake the handoff. Massarelli rolling. Pressured. Gets the ball to Quinn Campbell. Campbell over the five. Ducks a man and touchdown. Penalty flag goal coming up. We might have an illegal block against Bel Air. I think that's exactly what we're going to see, Scott. And uh, really, I don't know that that block was really necessary. I think he'd have gone in mm -hmm. anyway. And again, another well-executed play here. Here on the replay. Holding, holding, and uh, Ty then uh, gives and a lot of ground, dumps the ball to Quinn, and Quinn takes the ball in the end zone. But we are going to have a penalty against the Big Reds. A slip there just at about the three-yard line by one of the wide receivers. Coach Magistro wants a little explanation here. The official coming over and telling him exactly what happened on that play. And I know Coach Magistro can't be very happy with that Flipping turn of events. Flipping is the call against Bel Air, and that moves the ball back out to the 20-yard line. So a big loss there. What goes from what would have been a six-point touchdown score back to still a 15-14 ball game, and we're at the 20-yard line now for the Big Reds. It's still first and goal. So after having it first and goal at the six, back-to-back -back penalties have moved Bel Air all the way back out to the 20. That's very uncharacteristic like of this Big Reds football team. Matarkoski is lined up wide to the near side. Massarelli looking to throw. Going for Matarkoski, and it's nearly intercepted. That ball just kind of hung up there, and Shannon Jordan had a shot at it. Matarkoski did a good job to get his hand in there, really, in a way, and almost played defensive back position that time and knocked the ball down. Yeah, Jordan got a good break on the ball that time, was in trying to step in front of Matarkoski to make the interception. Did a real nice job defensively. So it brings up second and goal. Ball just over the 20-yard line, near the 19. Twin wideouts to the near side, and Lacondis and Matarkoski. The backfield has Quinn Campbell lined up directly behind Masarelli. Roth running out of there as well. Going towards the corner, and Matarkoski, and it's a little bit too far. Out of bounds and incomplete. And you're faced here with a situation if you're Bel Air 2, it's now third and goal. So you must get into the end zone 
There's no opportunity for a touchdown, or for a first down, that is. You must get in the end zone and get a score. Last couple plays, the Big Reds have gone deep and just overshot somewhat. Uh, they've had success with the underneath routes, the crossing route, and the backs out of the backfield, so uh, we may see that uh, here on third down. Third down, third and goal from the 19. Fake the hand out to Lacondas, looking towards the end zone. Now wanting to run is, is Masarelli. Has some running room. He's over the five, tries to put his head down, gets over the five-yard line, and out of bounds at about the four. Scott, you talk about coolness right there uh, was a, a real good indication of that. Ty Massarelli, is, he's done time after time. In fact, it looked like he was on skates out there. He was just kind of sliding a little bit, mm -hmm. taking his time, saw a little opening, and he cut back. You'll see here on the replay. Watch his feet in there. Just kind of slides around right in here a little bit, then breaks to his left and takes the ball down near the goal line. The ball's at about the four-yard line, and they're going to elect to go for it. On fourth and goal from the four. Plankton leading 15 to 14 now. Here in the mid part of the third quarter. Fourth and goal from the four. Trips to the tight near side. In motion is Lacondis again. Massarelli rolling, pressured. Looking towards the end zone. He's going to try and run it, and he's going to be stopped short. Stopped at about the two-yard line. Tried to turn it up and just could not get enough or get around the defender that time Masarelli and into the end zone. So the Big Reds are stopped short of the goal line. You'll see here on the replay, they got motion there with Clint Lacondas. Little misdirection action. He rolls to his right. He pumps, he pumps, and then elects to run the ball. He comes up just a little bit short. Matt Anderson, the quarterback for the Red Streaks, came up and made a key stop there on the one-yard line. Well, the one thing this does do is it makes the uh, Piketon Red Streaks have to start awfully deep in their own end. Well, Bel Air did not, unfortunately, get any points on that score, on that drive, that is. Yeah, you hate to come up shorthanded there after a nice drive like that that Bel Air put together, but uh, I guess if you don't get it in, uh, it's a good position to have them on their own one-yard line, and that Bel Air defense uh, can come up big right here. They can get the ball back and... Uh, get going again on offense. So Piketon will take over now. First down on their own two-yard line. Split backs behind Matt Anderson, the quarterback. Hands off to Thacker. Josh Montgomery. Right, that's Montgomery, good. excuse me. Gets out to about the five-yard line. Gain of about three on first down. It'll be second down at about seven. Mentioned last week, Scott, that Bel Air defense is what they call the swarm defense, and uh, they've done an excellent job of executing on defense uh, all year, and for that matter, some past several years. And uh, they're kind of a little bit overshifted the way they play that down tackles in a flex position, and that seems where uh, the red streaks are trying to go off their left side. Bel Air's right side. Here they come again. I sat behind Anderson, and no running room that time. From Montgomery as he comes to the near side, just gets back to the line of scrimmage. And you know, talking about this Piketon football team, they go 9-1 this year. And, uh, looking to get to their first ever uh, state semifinal or first state championship game ever. They uh, come into this uh, playoff season without a state title. Just for them, of course, the Bel Air Big Reds in back-to-back -back state championship games. Falling just short, they've been the runners-up the past two consecutive seasons. Trying to get back there for a third straight time. As we mentioned earlier, Piketon scored a lot of points, 63 being their high output and 21 being their low throughout the course of the year. This is a big play right here. Third down and seven, ball on the six. Anderson to throw it. Pass is caught, I believe, and it's going to be now very close to a first down. Mark is going to be ever important on this, and it's a first down without even having to measure. Yeah, they executed, they executed the slant route real well right there, and the ball was thrown down low where it's tough to get to. Uh, I thought they had a little bit of motion there by their slot man that time, but it wasn't called, but that is a first down. First down for Piketon, ball up to the 13-yard line. They got just what they needed. They needed seven, and they got it. Hand off in the backfield, and not much doing there. A fumble, a fumble. apparently, and I think the Big Reds say they have it. What do the officials say? No call yet. From the officials on the field, and apparently it's going to stay in the favor of Piketon. Yeah, now I think they're saying uh, one official ruled that he was down before the ball came out. There is a loss on the play back to about the 11-yard line. So you're looking at second down at about 12 now for Piketon. Boy, that would have been a huge turnover there had Bel Air been able to come up with the ball 
on the pike in 11. And he lost a yard or two there, so they're still in good shape here, uh, second down and long. Second and 12 with an eye set behind Anderson again. One wide out split to each side. Rolling out to the near side, looking downfield. Patches tipped and all nearly intercepted. David DeLong Anderson slipped, or he would have been able to come back and probably pick that ball off, but the footing a little slippery, and he lost his footing that time trying to come back. They run the uh, bootleg or the waggle action for the second time. They ran it earlier in the, in the first half one time mm -hmm. and uh, just nearly intercepted that time. DeLong, when he went to make his cutback towards the ball, when he saw that it had been tipped, just lost his footing, and the ball falls incomplete. Third down at about 12 from the 11 yard line. This game of football boils down to a lot of big third down plays and right here's one Scott. On the last third down at seven, they got just what they needed. They needed about 11 or 12 this time. Anderson, handoff goes draw? to Josh Montgomery on the draw and he's still on his feet and I think that second effort is gonna be enough for the first down. Josh Montgomery on the carry. An excellent run that time by Josh Montgomery right up the gut on the draw. He needed 11 or 12 yards, and it looks like he has enough. He does. They move the chains. They've executed this play extremely well tonight. Uh, the uh, draw to the tailback who we talked about has great moves, and he just kind of picks his way in and out of there, but he did pick up enough for a first down. First and 10 now. Ball up on the 24-yard line. They lead 15-14 to the red streak, so we have a penalty flag on the field right now. 5.04 is our time remaining here in the third quarter. The Pike and Red Streaks leading 15 to 14 over the Bel Air Big Reds. I think we may have someone in a neutral zone there. It's going to be an encroachment call on Pike and Red Streaks. And a I'm reminder to our fans that coming up following the ball game tonight, Jay and I will be selecting the Belmont Savings Bank player of the game. So stay tuned for that coming up in late stages of the fourth quarter, our post game show. Now our David Bloomquist is down on the sideline. David, what do you have for us? Scott, if you watch Montgomery run, he's been having a lot of success out here. He takes very short, choppy steps, and he keeps his knees high. And that's what you have to do on this field because it is a mess. And uh, his running style has really benefited Piketon, obviously. The carry that time will go nowhere that time, actually. Just back to about the line of scrimmage. So the Big Reds defense up to the task that time, and it'll stay second down and about, we'll call it 14. Following up on what David just said, Scott, uh, he does an excellent job, uh, uh, Montgomery, of following his blockers in there, and he kind of stays behind them, and uh, real hard and real difficult to tackle. Second and 14, ball on the 20. Matt Anderson under center. Fumble on the play, and Bel Air's on top of it. Hand off that time to Josh Montgomery, went right off his hip, and it's picked up by the Bel Air Big Reds. Uh, Chad Calder, I think, or was it Clint Ostrander that got onto it? I think it was Calder, 86, who was the man who recovered the fumble, and it was. And what a huge break for Bel Air. Here it is on the replay. You see the ball just goes off the hip of Montgomery, and there's Calder on top of it. The Big Reds are in business. First and 10, ball on about the 13-year, 12-yard line. Big break for the Big Reds right here. Massarelli. Hands off up the middle, wide open for Clinton Lacondas. He's over the five and down to about the one-yard line. We'll talk about executing the draw. We uh, talked about how the Red Streaks were very successful at that just a while ago, and here comes the draw on the first play for scrimmage. Uh, Ty hands the ball off to Clinton Lacondas, and he gets through the line behind nice blocking and takes that ball down to the one-yard line. And it's first and goal now for the Big Reds. Ball on the two-yard line. Lucanis now will split out wide to the far side. Power eye backfield with Jimmy Preston as the power eye back lined up to the right. Hand out to the top man. That's Kenny Roth dancing into the end zone. Touchdown. Kenny Roth goes in from two yards out. And just like that, the Bel Air Big Reds are back on top. They lead 20 to 15. As you said, the Big Reds lined up in a power eye formation. Straight handoff ISO to Kenny Roth. Comes off the right side. And again, behind good blocking, uh, of the offensive line of Bel Air, uh, Ryan Snyder, Aaron Chirpus, Tom Poe. Those guys do such a great job, and a lot of times, as is, is the case on most football teams, the offensive linemen and defensive linemen are the guys that are overlooked the most. And though most of those guys play both ways and do an excellent job on both sides of the football, they prove it again there. Justin Homer on to try the extra point. Kick is up, and it is good. So it's 21-15 now in favor of the Bel Air Big Range as we check it out on the city Hospital of Bel Air scoreboard, 
21-15 Big Reds with 3.34 remaining in the third quarter. Let's take a break. Back with more third quarter action right after this. You're watching Ohio High School playoff action on the News Channel 7 Game of the Week. Hometown Weatherling 7, it's here. The Reds have just scored again this time. Kenny Roth going in from three yards out to give the Big Reds a 21-15 advantage over the Red Streaks of Piketon High School. The big play on that drive, of course, the turnover on the fumble on the handoff from Matt Anderson to Josh Montgomery, which gave the Big Reds the ball on the Piketon 12-yard line. We talked about Pike is start, uh, starting deep in their own territory there, and uh, even though they picked up a first down or two, the Bel Air Big Reds were still in good shape there, and they recovered that fumble and big score. Ryan Snyder set to kick the ball off now for the Big Reds, as we mentioned. 334 remaining in the third quarter. Still a long way to go in this ball game. And Pike is going to get the ball back again. Rain continues to fall here at Salzburger Stadium. High end over end kick that'll come down, and that'll be returnable. Kyle Thacker with it. Puts his head down and does a nice job to get over the 25-yard line, and he's down at about the 26-yard line. Good return by Thacker that time, and again, just lost his footing as he went to make the cut. Roger Peters made the stop there on that return for the Big Reds. But Piketon will have decent field position to start this drive off, trailing now by six at 21 to 15. We'll start here now. Off from about the 26. We'll see if they come back to that option game which they had success with the last time on their last drive. One man in the backfield behind the quarterback coming down, throwing it to the near sideline and what a great defensive play by Richie Manarkoski. Josh Montgomery was the receiver that time. Got the ball, but Matterkowski was just on top of him as soon as he caught the ball. You see here on the replay, they like to go with a quick hitch to the outside. They had a tight uh, slot that time and twins to the left. Tried to get the quick hitch off, but Richie Matterkowski came up and made an excellent open field tackle. So a loss of about three on that play that time. We'll call it second down at about 13. Ball at about the 24-yard line. I said now. Anderson lobbing it up there, putting it out there, and overthrowing his receiver. Clinton Lacondis that time on the coverage. Shannon Jordan, the intended receiver that time for Matt Anderson. And quickly, it's now third down at about 13. Somewhat surprising, Scott, to see the Red Streaks come out here and throw the ball uh, two times in a row. They were having some pretty good success with the running game. Uh, of course, Bel Air, uh, you know, in pretty good shape right now with a third and real long. And now they're forced to probably throw the football or Bel Air has to watch for that draw, which they have had tremendous amount of success with tonight. One wide out split to the far side. Run the option down the far side. Pitch in the backfield goes to Montgomery. Breaks one tackle. Trying to turn the corner. He can't. Ryan Snyder is there. Jimmy Preston as well on the tackle. David DeLong also. He'll get back near to what the original line of scrimmage was, and it'll be third down, or fourth down and ten, excuse me. And Piketon is going to be forced into a punting situation. So the Big Red defense comes up strong that time, but in a way, Piketon going away from what, from what had been successful for them through much of the ball game so far. Yeah, they came back to the option that time, and I think the uh, Big Reds made some adjustments since that last series on the option. That time they uh, took the quarterback, Anderson, real quick, and they had the pitch man covered. Low, Low snap. snap, but the kick is out of there still, and a fair catch called for by Richie Matarkoski goes to his knees and makes the catch at about the 43-yard line. So the Bel Air Big Reds will have good field position to start this drive off from their own 43-yard line with 2.01 remaining in the third quarter. And the Big Reds now leading 21 to 15 over the Red Streaks of Plankton. You know, we talked about the high potent offenses, Scott, for both teams tonight, and we talked about the Big Reds racking up 463 points for the year, 46 point average. You know, the ironic thing is their lowest output of the whole year was against Martins Ferry last week, 38 points. They have scored 40 or better in every other game other than that win. As they went out to 10-0 again. Massarelli, tons of time, and Matarkowski is wide open. And he gets it down to the Piketon 
43-yard line. That really pass is complete. They're getting execution of the passing game at its finest. And right there was an excellent job under uh, bad conditions. Richard Matikowski catching that ball with his hands. You know, coaches emphasize to catch and tuck. And that time he zipped it in. Richie uh, with wet hands grabbed the ball and tucked it away. Nice gain. Gain of about 15 yards on first down. Gives the Big Reds a first down in Piketon territory. Matarkoski split out to the near side. Looking on the draw. He's got running room. He's over the 40, 35, 30. And slips as he gets down to the 25-yard line. But still another huge gain of about 18 yards on the carry that time. And it'll move the chains again. And I tell you what, he just runs that play. I don't, I don't know if there's too many other football teams around that run the quarterback draw as well as Bel Air. And it's thanks in part to number five who runs it uh, just uh, probably better than anybody else I've seen. Well, Scott, we talked earlier about a defensive coordinator's nightmare, and Bel Air's offense is that exactly that. You know, they came up with a big play, uh, throwing the ball over the middle, and then come back and spread them out, and then he takes off running. I mean, it's just almost impossible to defend something like that. First and 10 now, ball on the 25-yard line for the Big Reds. One man in the backfield, that's Quinn Campbell. Rolling out to the near side is Massarelli. Pressured from the back, gets away from the first way, but two penalty flags come flying in as Massarelli is tackled at the 30-yard line. And we'll wait to see what the flags are about. Possibly a illegal block by the Big Reds. And a holding call get a hold. is the penalty against the Big Reds. And if it happened at about the 30, that'll penalize him back to about the 40-yard line. You can see the rain continuing to fall and it blowing all around at times. In the middle of that field getting chewed up pretty good, as you see, uh, and that's where uh, they've been working at here the last several plays. So the officials talking things over with the red streaks as to what they want to do here. Bel Air's breaking out of the huddle, but the officials have still yet to mark the penalty off here against Bel Air. And Piketon, of course, will accept the penalty, a 10-yarder, which takes it back over the 40 to about the 41-yard line. Still first down. You're talking now first down and 25. Hand off. That goes to Kenny Roth, I believe, number 30. And he gets a few yards down to about the 36-yard line. It's a gain of about four. And we'll call it second down at about 21 now. Piketon operating out of that uh, basic 40 defense pretty much all evening here. Haven't made a lot of different adjustments. I don't see as much blitzing uh, as we saw earlier on in the game, Scott. And I think uh, the reason being that is the ability of Ty Massarelli to just turn it right up field and... If he gets past the uh, blitzing combination, he has plenty of running room. Slip that time on the intended pass attempt to Richie Matarkoski. Ball was over his outside shoulder. He tried to make a cutback towards it, but lost his footing in some very slippery conditions, and the ball goes incomplete. Yeah, very difficult to uh, do what you normally do on a dry field under normal conditions there. Probably be able to catch that ball by turning back to the outside, but as Richie turned, his feet slid from underneath him, and he was unable to get that ball. Third down now at about 21. Ball on the 36-yard line. Matter Koski out to the wide side. Lakata split to the near side. It's Roth and Quinn Campbell in the backfield. The tight end is Ryan Snyder. Masarelli going downfield to Matter Koski towards the end zone. Makes a diving effort and can't come up with it. Incomplete pass that time, intended That's for right, Richie Manarkowski and Bel Air after the holding penalty is really going to be forced to come out and punt the they football the now. Down. We know Scott will see her on the replay. Again, a pretty good job of the offensive line blocking here, and Ty lets it go and uh, in just out, out of the outstretched arms right there, the receiver. But, uh, you know, the thing about it, we haven't commented, the fact that he has thrown the ball very, very well under real bad conditions. That ball was wet, even though they're getting another ball in there every play. He's done a nice job of throwing the football. So on fourth and 21, the Big Reds will be forced to punt. It's Matt Erkoski who will be doing the punting. Good snap back to him. It's a low, wobbly line drive kick that I think is going to have enough. But no, what a play that time to keep it in. And it's going to be downed on the one-yard line. Didn't get the number on who the first guy was down there, but made a great effort to keep the ball out of the end zone. We'll have it here on the replay for you. I think, uh, Scott, number 26 maybe, or who was that? Let's take a look here.
couldn't get the number. Might have been Corey Blazik, number 26. Maybe I saw a 26 runner, but I'm not sure. But an excellent job there, mm -hmm. keeping that ball from going in the end zone. Apparently, it was one, uh, one of the LaRoches, apparently, that kept the ball out of the end zone there, we're being told. Hand off, though, goes to, I believe that's Montgomery. 20, or is that Kyle Thacker? It was Thacker. Kyle Thacker, Thacker, yeah. 44. And Jersey used to be white. Down. It's Kyle hard, Thacker. Hard to tell those numbers right now. Uh, they're pretty muddy, and it's kind of difficult to get a read on some play of Play by play man's nightmare. And I'm living it. And that's the end of the third quarter. Time runs out here in the third quarter of play. The Bel Air Big Reds are leading going to the fourth quarter on the City Hospital of Bel Air scoreboard. It's 21 to 15 in favor of the Big Reds. One quarter left to play in tonight's ball game. Back with it right after this. It's 21 to 15 in favor of the Bel Air Big Reds on the City Hospital Bel Air scoreboard. And a reminder once again, folks, to stay tuned at the end of tonight's ball game. We'll have the Belmont Savings Bank Player of the Game coming up for you at the conclusion of tonight's ball game here from Zanesville. Division Four playoff action tonight. Great ball game so far, and we're down to the final 12 minutes of the evening. First and ten now for Piketon, and a penalty flag right as the ball snapped. Penalty flags on the field. Anderson was looking to keep and roll with it. And we have a legal procedure against the red streak. So mark him back five yards to the 13, and it'll be first and 15 from there. Now, something that the red streaks have been real successful with, that we mentioned earlier, is the uh, draw to their tailback, Josh Montgomery. Again, deep in their own territory in a long situation. Maybe that'd be something that Bel Air might want to watch for, and also uh, them throwing the football down the field. First and 15 now. Ball moved back to the 13-yard line for the Red Streaks after the illegal procedure penalty. Early portions of the fourth quarter were just underway here. And Bel Air enjoying a 21-15 lead right now over Piketon. Taking a lot of time in a huddle, they definitely Scott. are. Referee's running around here. He's in the secondary. Now he's going back to the line <laughs> of scrimmage. Apparently they want to reset the clock to uh, read uh, 12 minutes. As it should for the beginning of the fourth quarter. Since that's a dead ball penalty. The referee, you can see him uh, pointing to the watch. He wants to have the clock reset. Don't know if they're getting the message here in the booth, though. Maybe one of us should go run and tell the clock operator that's what he wants. <laughs> I think they're coming over now to tell the bench to call There it is. There we go. That took long enough, huh? <laughs> Give everybody a little break there. There you go. So the clock is finally reset, and we'll have action underway again. Look over here to the near sideline. Todd Massarelli is an uh, interested uh, spectator standing up on the big reds bench with a towel over his shoulder, hoping his defense can get the ball back for him here. Handoff goes to Thacker that time, and he'll try the right side of the line and gets over the 15 to about the 16. Gain of about three or so. We'll call it second down at about 15. Montgomery, the man on the ball carry that time, not Thacker. 20. Second down now, and about 12 or 13. Ball just over the 15-yard line, about the 16. We're early in the fourth quarter, and Bel Air is enjoying a six-point advantage over the Plankton Red Streaks. Trip, two, two wideouts split out far. One man lined up to the near side. Pass tossed up there and caught. Excellent catch that time. Pulled down by Shannon Jordan that time. Yeah, there he is on the replay. Run the slant route right here. He just raises up and throws the ball. He goes airborne, Shannon does, and makes a nice catch between two defenders. Good hit that time by Nathan Taylor, number 35. And Jimmy Preston. Mm -hmm. Stops him short of what it would have been a first down. It's third down and three now for the Red Streaks. Ball on about the 26 yard line, just across the 25 and the Bel Air faithful come to their feet here at Salzburger Stadium. Hoping their defense can stop them short. Option to the near side. Laconis is coming after Montgomery and he's got it. 
Big, big defensive play right here by the Big Reds. Clint Laconis getting a great read on the option, coming up and taking the pitch man. You'll see here on the replay that he comes down the line option, fakes inside. They take the quarterback. He pitches. And uh, Shannon Jordan was coming in to make the block on Lacondas that time, but knew if he did, he was going to be called for a clipping, and he held up, and Lacondas zoomed right by him and made the big stop. So it was a loss of about three yards, and it brings up fourth down and six, and Piketon will be forced to punt. We got a penalty, Scott. Kick away by Matt Peters will come down, and it is caught just over the 50 by Richie Manerkoski, but there is a penalty flag at the far side of the field. Maybe somebody offside or illegal procedure against Plankton. And Bel Air may elect to just go ahead and take it. They won't decline the ball. They've got great field position at right about midfield at their own 47-yard line. Yeah, under conditions like this, you don't want to take a chance of maybe fumbling right. another punter or what have you. They've got great field position, and so they'll take the ball right there and go to work on offense. Already leading 21 to 15. We're in the fourth quarter with 10.04 remaining in the ball game. Bel Air trying to add to their lead. Anarkoski and Frank Hibbets will go out wide to the far side. Lacondas is in the backfield with Quinn Campbell. Ryan Snyder is the tight end lined up to the near side. Handoff goes to Lacondas straight up the middle. He gets into Piketon territory and down to the 44-yard line. A gain of nearly nine that time on the first down play, and it'll be second down and about one. Nice job there on the, uh, you wouldn't call that a counter, but a little bit of misdirection there. Inside handoff to Clint Lacondas. He shows his quickness and takes it right up the middle. Gain of nine on the first down play. It's second and one from about the 44-yard line. If you can get positive plays like that on first down, you're in good shape. Masarelli under center. Hands off to Ron. Big running room. He's over the 40 and dives over the 35 and down to the 34-yard line. A gain of about 10 on that play. And it'll move the change, and it's a first down for the Big Reds. And, you know, as we said in the first half, there's just so many weapons, it appears, out of this backfield from the Big Reds. They can hit you with about anybody. Hey, you shut one down, and somebody else steps up and makes a big play. Right there, a nice run by Kenny Roth. Talk about Roth, Quinn Campbell, Jimmy Preston, Clint Lacondas, Richie Matarkoski, Ty Massarelli, Ryan Snyder, David DeLong. The list is endless. Mm -hmm. All those guys have big play ability. Twin wideouts to the far side on first and 10 from the 34. And a penalty flag comes flying in there. And going to see, I think, an illegal procedure penalty field. against uh, the Bel Air Big Reds. Illegal shift. We'll watch and see what the call is here. And it is a procedure penalty against the Big Red. So mark them back five to just about the 40-yard line. There's nine minutes remaining in the ball game now. Bel Air would like to be able to stick another one into the end zone here to give themselves a little more breathing room. Yeah, now they can afford to take as much time off that clock as possible. But the big thing is, is coming up with some points on the end of it. Twin wideouts to the far side from Masciarelli this time on first and 15. Going back to pass over the middle, and it is caught by a second receiver, Matarkoski. He's over the 15 and down to about the 12-yard line. I think his intended receiver, or at least who thought he was his intended receiver, was Kenny Roth at the time. The ball was behind him. Looked like it would fall incomplete, but Matarkoski was about three yards behind him, comes up with a catch, and gets it down to about the 11. You see here on the replay that ball was zipped in on a rope, and at one point it looked like, as you say, it was going to Kenny Roth, and then it looked like it was going to be intercepted, mm -hmm. and then in the hands of Richie Matarkoski, who kept concentration on that ball the entire time. And he gets a first down, down to the 12-yard line. First and 10 from there for the Big Reds. Massarelli, hand off to Lacondas out of the backfield, trying to turn it up. He'll get a hard-fought yard to the 11-yard line. Piketon with a good job that time to slow him down. Matt Peters in on the tackle that time for the Pike and Red Streaks. It'll bring up second down at about nine from the 11-yard line. Clock continues to wind. We're now under eight minutes to play in the ball game, And that's something that's going to become increasingly important to the Pike and Red Streaks should Bel Air stick one in the end zone here. Yeah, it'll put a lot of pressure on their offense to try to get the ball down under these conditions and score and score uh, quickly a couple times. The rain continues to fall here at Salzburger Stadium in Zanesville. 
trips to the far side. One Wide man in the trips. backfield. That's Quinn Campbell. The tight end is Snyder lined up to the near side. Pressure in the backfield. Wide open in the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Kenny Roth, the man on the end of that ball. He was wide open in the end zone for the Bel Air touchdown. It's now 27 to 15 as we await the extra point try. We see here they went to wide trips and a tremendous look off that time by Ty Massarelli. If you watched his eyes at the snap as he was dropping, he was looking to his left the entire time. The two outside receivers came inside and Roth went to the outside and he uh, fired the ball in the end zone for a touchdown. And he was wide open. Homer, there was nobody near him, Justin Homer, to give Belair what would be a 13-point advantage. Snap, the hold is down, the kick is up, and it is good. So with 7.27 remaining in the fourth quarter, the Belair Big Reds have taken a 28-15 lead on the City Hospital of Belair scoreboard thanks to a 11-yard touchdown toss from Ty Massarelli to Kenny Roth. And the Bel Air Big Reds increase their lead now over Piketon to 13 points. Again, the ability of the Bel Air offense to take the football down the field. They had good field position on that drive to start with, but just methodically went down the football field, run, pass, run, pass, mixing things up, nothing to key on, and then again, a nice execution on that last touchdown pass. Let's go down to our David Blumquist, who's on the sideline. David? Thanks a lot, Scott. I mentioned it earlier, and all during this uh, third quarter, the Bel Air coaches have really been challenging their players, saying, you've got to make the plays, and the offense has done it, and also the defense. It's really tightened up, and it's held piked in their last couple of times. Also, I wanted to point out somebody who doesn't get a lot of attention, holder Frankie Hibbets. He's done a great job on these extra points, getting the football down for a homer. He's done a terrific job, and uh, sometimes that always doesn't get pointed out, and I, that's what I want to do right now. Frankie Hibbert's the holder. That's a tough job. I've done that before. Try to be a holder, and uh, the only time you usually notice is when one's missed. Especially in this weather. Mm -hmm. I end over end kick. that will come down, and two men there to receive it. With the return. Coming right back up the middle. Good run over the 35. Breaking tackles up to about the 40-yard line. Kyle That's Kyle Thacker who gets it all the way out to the 40-yard line. A great return that time. And I think we're going to have a personal foul, a late hit uh, called against Bel Air, so it'll give me a better field position. I think that's Thacker who's still down on the field there on the far side as the trainers come out for Piketon. Hope he's not uh, injured too bad or not. And there is a personal foul against the Big Rads. Let's go back down to David Bloomquist. David? Scott Rick Goodrich, coach from Bridgeport's down here, and he just told me that uh, Nelsonville York was winning their game in the third quarter, 33 to 14. And of course, that's who Bel Air would have next if they pull it out. So uh, Nelsonville winning right now in the third. All righty, David. Big Reds looking, they hope, forward to uh, a regional championship next week, a regional final. You know, it's hard to say, Scott. Uh, of course, this game is not over yet, yeah, no of course, way. but uh, it's hard to say, but uh, this could be the site of next week's ball game as well. Personal foul is the penalty. That's, uh, boy, not a good time to have a penalty like that because you give Piketon great field position at the 45-yard line, and there's still plenty of time to play here with 7-17, and that is uh, Kyle Thacker who's being uh, taken off the sideline. He was the return man, and there he is. Here you'll see the uh, return here. Thacker taking the ball upfield. Takes a pretty good shot there. He's sandwiched a little bit. But there, right there you see uh, the late hit coming mm -hmm. in. That resulting in the 15-yard penalty and giving Plankton great field position on the Bel Air 45. And as we said, they're only down by 13 points with plenty of time remaining. Anderson looking to throw. Going towards Peters. Has it. Pass is caught. Nice catch that time by Matt Peters up to the Bel Air 31-yard line. It's a gain of 14, and they move the chains for Piketon. So just like that, the Red Streaks come right back, and they're moving the ball well. That's about the third time they run that bootleg action or that waggle action, and uh, you know their uh, receivers are doing a real nice job of holding on to the football there. Mm -hmm. And a hard hit again that time, but Peters holds on to it. First down on the Bel Air 31. High set. Quick pitch in the backfield goes to Montgomery, trying to gain the corner, but he won't. Pulled down 
Jimmy Preston, the first man there to get a hold of his ankle and not allow him to turn that corner. Good job by Preston to not give up the corner at all and string him out and allow the rest of his pursuit to gain the uh, position needed to knock down Montgomery. Second down and about nine. They'll give him a gain of about one on the carry. Clock turning, though. It'll become a uh, ever more important factor as it continues to wind down. We're under 6.20 to play here in the ball game. And Bel Air up 28 to 15. Anderson, quick hitch, and the old hook and ladder there. They get the back ball back to the uh, running back, who gets down to about the 24-yard line. Yeah, a little flea flicker action that time. They threw the ball out to the right on a quick hitch, and then pitched the ball back to uh, Montgomery. Montgomery there. Limping back looks to the he, huddle a little bit. Yeah. I was going to say, it looks like he's hobbling a little bit, too. They're going to bring the change over to see how close they are to a first down. Over here to the near sideline. Here they stretch the chains out. Down to the sideline here. And in the fourth quarter. And as uh, Coach Goodrich had told David that Nelsonville York Wheelersburg game's now in the fourth quarter and Nelsonville York is leading 33 to 14 as we had already uh, told you earlier. Ball is just short. Third down and about one. You see it on the City Hospital of Bel Air School Board. Page 28 to 15 in favor of the Bel Air Big Reds. And again a reminder Stay tuned at the end of the ball game for the Belmont Savings Bank player of the game tonight here in Division Four playoff action in Zanesville. Big Reds enjoying a 13-point advantage, 6.02 remaining. Matt Anderson under center. Handoff goes to the first man through. The red streaks lined up in that unusual, uh, which basically ends up being a power eye formation. They put the back in the behind the tackle there, in between the tackle and the guard, and they went off that. They're going to get another measurement right here because uh, it's going to be real, real close. That was Matt Parker, the uh, ball carrier that time. He's replaced Kyle Thacker, who was injured on the uh, personal foul late hit on the kick return. Not seen Thacker back into the ball game yet. Matt Parker has been playing at fullback now. He'll stretch the chains out, and he has it by just the nose first of the football. Ten, first in ten. And the so it'll be first in ten for the Red Streaks. Ball at about the Bel Air 22-yard line. We're now down though to 5:52 remaining in our ball game. I and think Kyle Thacker two scores. Kyle Thacker is now back in the game, Scott. Uh, he's okay, which is good. Good to see him back in the ball game. Mike will split Herb Stemp out to the far side, and it's an eye set behind Matt Anderson. Thacker is the front man, and they fake the hand up to Montgomery. Going to the air is Matt Anderson, but he's going to be dropped and knocked down for a loss. Sacked in the backfield that time, and another good effort once again by Chad Calder, who comes up there and puts the hit on him and does not allow him to get out of the backfield. You'll see on the replay here, they went back to that bootleg action. They had success earlier hitting the underneath man. That time, both the underneath man and the deep man were covered very well in the secondary, and he had to elect to run the ball if there was nowhere to go. Connor and Ostrander play probably two of the best defensive end positions I've seen from some high school football players in a long time. Second down and long now. Second and about 13. Anderson fakes the handoff, looking to set the screen up to the far side, but Bel Air is right there again. And again, as we just talked about him, they go to the other side, and there he is, Clint Ostrander. And yeah, number 84, Clint Ostrander, a senior, six foot 180. He wasn't fooled at all. They ran the little bootleg action to the uh, right, and they threw back with a screen to the left. You'll see here on the replay, but he just stayed right at home, came right outside, and stepped.